Well, we're out here this morning at a very special place. This is Bible Point. I kid you not. This is a place, a historic place where Theodore Roosevelt used to come out here to read his Bible. And we know what Bible it was that he was reading. Theodore Roosevelt was a Freemason. He had definitely some powerful family connections that got him into the office of president. But uh, you can say what you want about the guy. He was a tough man. Um, definitely no question about it. And this is where one of the areas he came to that made him into a, a strong, tough man. Um, here in northern Maine, uh, near the town of Island Falls. If you know anything about the life of Theodore Roosevelt, this is one of the places where he walked, right here, where I'm standing. And I want to talk to you today about God's blessing in judgment. A lot of times you think of judgment as a negative thing, and usually it is. But uh, in judgment, there's actually blessing if you're saved, if you're born again. Um, there's a lot of things that you need to judge in this life. And if you just want to go through life without ever judging anything and anybody, uh, you're not going to amount to a whole lot. So we're going to start out here in Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23. Black fly season and mosquitoes are coming out too, so we'll get through this. <coughs> Exodus chapter 23, verse 1 through 8. Thou shalt not raise a false report, put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Huh. You're not supposed to rest judgment. Change it. If you think of rest being like the root word of wrestle, you're, you don't want to move judgment away. And you know something? I just have to pause here for a minute from the scriptures. There's an awful lot of people in America that call themselves Christians and they've been praying for God's blessing to fall upon this nation. And what they're doing is they're resting His judgment. Because what they really mean is, God, please bless this nation so we can continue in the kind of false prosperity that we've had for the last 100 years because we want to continue the sin. We don't want to have this nation reset. That's a problem. You're resting God's judgment. And I'll tell you right now, if you ever say, God bless America, you're not right with God. Plain and simple. Don't complain about the conditions of this world, of the wickedness and everything else that we're seeing, and all the evil and everything else out there, and then turn around and say, God bless America. You're resting judgment. You're in sin. You're not right with God. Exodus 23, verse 3. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Keep thee from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous. That's why this channel is not monetized. I don't want a gift from the wicked, from the wicked sponsors out there of YouTube that put their ad revenue on and things. The ads that appear on my videos were put there by YouTube, and I don't make one cent from them. But see, if I was monetized and if I was making money for my preaching from the secular world, that would start to kind of change my preaching, wouldn't it? There'd be certain things that I'd kind of try to avoid speaking about because it might affect the uh, money coming in. That's why you can't monetize as a Christian if you're putting out preaching videos. You want to monetize and make some good money, then put out secular videos. Just that simple. It's a basic concept of Scripture. And yet I attack monetized supposed Bible-believing channels and people say, I don't know what the problem is. I just don't see a problem with it. it. Shows you how wicked people are now. Funny because these same people would condemn Theodore Roosevelt for being a Freemason. Oh, he was just faking it when he came out here to write, read the Bible. He read the Bible as a young man out here. What happened to him later on in life? Well, it's a shame. I don't know. He got into you know, all the other stuff, the politics and everything else. But yet, he had better discernment than a lot of these modern professing Christians. He was willing to come out here and suffer, unlike a lot of you out there. 
they would just be aghast at coming out here and having some of your blood spilled by or you know sucked out of you by a mosquito or a black fly or something. A Freemason a hundred years ago, a little over a hundred years ago, had better character. And yet you'll attack him. Yeah, right. Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19, beginning in verse 35. Ye shall do no unrighteous unrighteousness in judgment, in meat yard, in weight, or in measure. <laughs> oh boy, well that's changed here in America. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hin shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them. I am the Lord. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a fair system? Wouldn't it be nice to go back when Theodore Roosevelt stood on this very site? Before there was a Federal Reserve? When we still had gold and silver? Wouldn't it be nice to have that? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to actually go out and have hope that you could own your own home without going into some huge death pledge debt? Mortgage, if you don't know what mortgage means, it's a death pledge. I'm not joking. Look it up. You know, Google it. <laughs> Whatever. Wouldn't that be nice? Why don't we have those things? Because professing Christians in this country have wrested God's judgment. They see things going bad and they say, hey, let's not take care of the problem. Let's just say, God bless America. God bless America. You know what the, the sick thing is? God answered their prayers. Huh? What are you talking about? God answered those wicked people's prayers. Oh, you want my blessing? You don't want me to stop this? You don't want to go through some hard times? Then go right on ahead. Continue in your sin. And we'll see how it is in a hundred years. Welcome to today. With all the horrible evil and everything else out there. Incredible. Deuteronomy chapter 1. It just amazes me that we've had the slaughtering of babies in this country for since 1974. 48 years of, of killing babies because they're not convenient. Oh yeah, we're, we've come a long way. Boy, I'll tell you what, we sure have evolved. Uh, I, last time I checked, I don't think I see too many animals out here in nature killing their unborn babies because they want to go out, out on the town or have a career to think about. Do you realize the average American woman is lower than an animal? God bless America. <laughs> I don't think so. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 17. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, which we do here in America. But ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. Isn't that something? Oh, there's people looking at me. Oh, oh, you know. Some of you uh, Christian professing women out there, you're afraid to wear dresses out in public. You want to look like a transvestite. Look when, you know when the word transvestite was created? Early 1900s, when women started giving up their dresses and wearing pants? Huh. But uh, some of you are afraid because of people's faces. Oh, I was out in the, in the dress the one time and people looked at me weird. Oh, Really? Sickening. Oh, I don't want to put magnets, you know, scripture signs on my vehicle because people look at me funny. You're fearing the face of man. The judgment is God's and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things that ye should do. You know, there's some things I'd like to see changed in this country. There's some things that my ancestors came here in 1720. I'm an old American, okay? I go way back, all right? Uh, we came here to escape the tyranny of the Roman Catholic Church that was taken over Europe, that had taken over Europe. That's why we came here. We didn't come here for business opportunities or something like that. We came here to worship the Lord freely on our own without some stinking pope telling us what we're supposed to do. 
And I'd like to see a lot of Catholics leaving this country. They don't belong here. I'd like to take your stinking Jesuits and get out of this nation and all this other stuff. But you know what's too hard for me? So you know what I'm doing? I'm taking it to the Lord. And you will never hear the blasphemous words out of this mouth again, God bless America, unless I'm saying it as a, to condemn it. I don't want God's blessing on this country. I want God's judgment on this country because in his judgment is our blessing as Bible-believing Christians. If I really want the judgment or the blessing of God, then I have to have the judgment of God. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 3. Because, there's the wind blowing my page. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. All his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. He's waiting to judge. Be nice if a whole bunch of Christians would just stop saying, please bless this mess that we are in right now. Stop it. Quit resting his judgment. He, all his ways are judgment. Everything he does is judgment. He loved you enough to die on the cross. Why? Because you're judged. You're a sinner. He had to judge you and say, you're so wicked and disgusting and vile and filthy and useless that I have to die myself on the cross to pay for your sins. All his ways are judgment. <laughs> you know, well, he, no, I, I believe God is love. Yeah, okay, and what does love require? It requires judgment. Right over there is my son. Standing over there. I love him. Guess what? Here comes a bear. Here comes some other whatever through the woods or something like that. I'm going to judge them. I'm going to attack them. Why? Because I love my son. Oh, God is love. My God is a God of love. Do you understand his judgment? Do you understand that he burns people forever? Do you understand that? All his ways are judgment. Is that the God that you worship? Oh, no, I find a few select verses out of the New Testament, and that's the God that I worship. Well, then you have the wrong God, because the God of the New Testament is the God of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. Go down to verse 39 of the same chapter. <clears throat> See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God with me. There's no uh, God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's God the Father, that's a biblical term, but there's only one God. There's no other God beside Him. All right? Trinity is a lie, if you haven't discovered that yet. I kill? God kills? Yeah. And I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and re will reward them that hate me. There's a lot of people right now in this country that hate God. God wants to give them a special reward. You say, what's standing in his way? A bunch of professing Christians saying, God bless America and resting his judgment. We'll talk more about that as we continue. <clears throat> Verse 42, I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will re render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. I'd sure like to see that. I'd sure like to have that blessing, but it can only come if God's judgment hits this country. Well, I just hope that we just have a little bit more time to share the love of Jesus. Uh, the people in this nation in America, and in most of your nations out there, they've had enough time. There's been more than enough time to repent. But see, here's the thing. Because, because judgment against a evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. It's in the book of Ecclesiastes. You know what? 
a lot of people, they, they do wickedness and they go, nothing happened. Hey, this, okay, I'll do something else. Nothing happened. And before long, they start to think to themselves, you know what, I don't think there is a God. What they don't realize is that God is long-suffering. He's patient. He's merciful. But it gets to the point where God has had enough, and then you don't stop His judgment. Then it comes, and it's vicious, and it's ferocious, and it's horrible, and you can cry out to Him in that time, and He won't even listen to you. Oh, the love of our God's un... un uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, without any kind of strings to it or whatever else. And, um, unconditional. That's the word I was looking for. It's unconditional. The love of our God is unconditional. Uh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> you don't know the Bible. You don't know the God of the Bible. Let me show you. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning in verse 22. Some of the most important verses of Scripture here on, in relation to God's judgment. Proverbs 1, 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. God's Word brings knowledge. That's why I'm here at uh, Bible Point. There was a president that there was a man that wanted to be president one day here studying this book, this blessed book. Because there were a lot more Bible believing Christians back then. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. How about that? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. To you. I will make my words known unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Excuse me. That's what a young man did here. Hmm. Had lost his father and he was came up here to a man named William Sewell in Island Falls. His house is still there. Hey, let me take you out in the woods and show you how to log, Theodore. Show you how to be a man. Come out in a place like this. Get all the blessings of the bugs biting you and the sweat and everything else and the but the breeze up here in the air and everything else and the beautiful Matawamkeg River there. It's amazing. It does some good things for you. And what a great place to read the Word of God. But look what happens here. Verse 24. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have set it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. We're not listening. People don't want the judgment of God. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Interesting, there's been some real bad tornadoes that have hit this year. Whirlwinds. Hmm. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. It's kind of funny, you know, they, the King James Bible written from 1604 to 1611, they shall uh, and be filled with their own devices. <laughs> Talk about some advanced revelation there. You say, what's that? Well, my devices, my iPhone, my Android, my this, my that, that's your device. Well, you're filled with it, aren't you? All these people have no life at all. And they just walk around. Hey, you want to go out to a place like Bible Point? Drive way out in the middle of the wilderness area and, and then hike a mile back into the thing? No, I have to check my cell phone. My cell phone won't work out here. Okay, then be filled with your own devices. How about that? All the filth and everything else that you want right there in the palm of your hand. Okay, be filled with your devices. And you know, I'm such a kooky nut. I've warned people about cell phones. They put off electrical fields. It's in the warning thing. Keep it away from your body and all that stuff. And people, oh yeah, and you, you just won't give up your cell phone. Okay, 
Be filled with your own devices then. <laughs> oh, Brother Brian, I got cancer. What am I supposed to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. Why would God allow this? You know, you can be a partaker with the lost world if you're saved and you don't sanctify certain things out of your life. I mean, did Theodore Roosevelt need a cell phone to come back in here? What if he fell and hurt himself? You know, he would need to call for help. Uh, he didn't need one, and you know what? We don't either. We're back in here. Well, that's very dangerous. What would happen if you had a vehicle breakdown? We would get a very big walk-in. <laughs> um, just like people did for thousands of years. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Oh, you mean the uh, all the debtors out there? The people that keep their foolish life going with their credit card debt? Just keep the illusion going of their new truck and their big house and all the toys and all the other things and all this stuff? Just It's all just debt. Well, what is it? It's prosperity of fools. I have to have all these things and whatever else, and I want it right now. I'm not saving up to buy it. I have to have it right now. You don't understand. That's just the way it is. I have to have this stuff. You're a fool. There's so many people that are so deeply in debt right now. I mean, I've heard of people having 20 credit cards. 20. A lot of them to pay off the other credit cards. That's a problem. A lot of people are on polypharmacy, it's what it's called. Multiple drugs, most of which to, are to counteract the the uh, known side effects of the known after effects, excuse me, I have to say it the right way, counteract the after effects of the other drugs. Prosperity of fools. I go to my doctor and I have weekly checkups and everything else and the guy's killing you. Do you understand that? Most doctors in this country are about killing people. Verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. <laughs> Pretty good place to be quiet from fear of evil, isn't it? Dwell safely. Hey, the violence is really getting bad in the city. Hmm. Well, it, it, I do have to say there is some violence out here. These bugs flying around me trying to bite me. That is true. A little difference there. Proverbs 19. Proverbs chapter 19. Verse 21. Here we go again. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. There are many devices, many things that these guys are scheming and the conspiracy and all the other stuff that these guys are trying to do. And you have the World Economic Forum with Klaus Schwab and you have uh, all these different things. The IMF and we're going to do this and the Bank of International Settlements and, and all this. We're going to come out with CBDCs and we're going to have all these things. We're going to enslave people and we're going to... The counsel of the Lord shall stand. Your devices that you come up with, all your little scheming and everything else doesn't mean anything. It's up to the Lord. It's what the Lord decides. And those who are right with Him that can pray to Him and get answers to their prayers. Hmm. Verse 22. The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. <laughs> Think about that one. A poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that shall... And he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Do you fear God? If you do, you won't be visited with evil. God will take care of you. Just that way. We'll talk more about that later. God's plans are going to stand, in other words. Proverbs chapter 13. Go back to Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. And uh, we'll start in uh, verse 13. Read down to verse 25. 
Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. You know, I've seen lost people that have a proper reverence for this book, and God actually rewards them. They don't go to heaven when they die. It's not that they get automatically saved just because they believe that this book is God's word, but I've seen God do things with people like that. I've seen God speak through lost people. I've seen it many times. You have a reverence for this book, there'll be a little bit of a blessing there from the Lord, and you have a chance of getting saved. But if you despise this book, if you say, well, I used to be King James only, I used to use the King James Bible, but now I use a new version because it's so much easier to understand and whatever. If you despise God's word, you're going to be destroyed. Verse 14, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Oh, I, I have so much wealth and everything else, you know, the prosperity of fools. Uh, how's that going for you right now there, people? With your mortgage payment, your vehicle payments, and your all your other payments and credit card debt and all the other stuff, how's that uh, way of transgression going? Pretty hard? That's what the Bible says. But I guess I should just pray for God's blessing and just say, God bless, God bless, God bless and rest the judgment of the Lord, it's not happening. We need to see the transgressors brought down. Every prudent man delayeth, or excuse me, dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. <laughs> yeah. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. How about that? The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to, to fools to depart from evil. <laughs> I've got to love that. It's ab abomination to fools to depart from evil. Yeah. Hey, why don't you come out here and read the word of God and things like a lost man did a hundred plus years ago. Oh, I, no, I don't want to do that. I, no, better things to do. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil, pursu evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Proverbs 13, 22. Remember that one. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Let's pray for the judgment of God to hit this nation and to see the wicked sinners leave and be slaughtered off and whatever else through war, through famine, whatever else. And you know what? God might say, that nice house that they had, that nice this or that, here's a good deal for it, for you, my righteous child. How about that? Verse 23, Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. Remember that one. Okay, there's a famine coming. It's being created right now with all the destruction of crops and, and all these food processing plants and everything else. Uh, the inflation is just out of control and the diesel price is going through the roof to cause the price of food that's being delivered to grocery stores to go up. I mean, it's, it's just beyond you, you know anything you could ever imagine happening here in this country. Uh, why? Well, it's the judgment of God. But according to our verse there, verse 25, the righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. God's going to make a separation very soon. And we're going to see supernaturally who God protects and who God says, no, you're never one of mine. I never knew you. You claim that you know me. You claim that you believed the gospel and whatever else, but I never knew you. I never saved you. You never even asked me to save you. You just believed it in your mind because you're a Gnostic. We're going to see. We will see the separation coming very soon. When things really fall apart in this country, and I pray every day that they do. I'm not ever going to pray for God's judgment. Oh, God, keep things going. Or for God's blessing, excuse me. God, please keep things going. No, stop it. Stop this nation from going any further into the wickedness that it's gone into. We need to see some judgment here, Lord. We'll talk about some judgment here in a little bit. But uh, next, let's go to 
Psalm 55. Psalm 55, verse 22 and 23. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer, suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Bloody and deceitful men are all over this country right now, and they're not going to live out half their days. God is about finished with this nation. I can promise you that. And Christians can help it come even quicker. And we need to be doing that. We need to be saying, God, God, please judge this nation. I'm going to give you some things to pray about here at the end of the study. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Do you fear God? Do you believe that He is able to destroy people and cause tremendous judgment? I hope you fear God because it will prolong your days. Verse 28, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The expectation. Oh, I think that the housing market's getting better. I think the economy's never been better. I think we have good times ahead and everything else. The expectation of those wicked people is going to perish. Okay? Uh, the news media is the only thing that's keeping most of these people going. It's like a drug for them. You know? I mean, it's not just that they you go past the houses and you see the television monitors and news media just telling them what to think you know 1984 you know George Orwell they're just uh, big brother tells me what to think and then they walk around with they got their little device you know handheld devices and they're going around watching what's the latest what's the stock market doing oh the Dow's up you know three points or something oh uh, things are getting better <laughs> craziness see where we're reading to here down to verse 32. Uh, verse 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inherit the earth. Inhabit the earth, excuse me. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. You know, I'm really looking forward to a point in time when there's a lot of dead, wicked people. So I don't have to hear a bunch of profanity and a bunch of foul speech and whatever else out there. I'm really looking forward to a time when my God starts to act and judge this nation and people begin to, to fear Him. People carrying the dead bodies of their relatives to be buried. And they think, start thinking about eternity. You know, I've said this before in other studies, but Robert Sheffy... Robert Sayers Sheffy, a Methodist circuit-riding preacher back in the 1800s, said the best time of his years, all of his years of ministry, early 1800s the whole way up through to the later part of the 1800s, the best years of his ministry were during the Civil War. Whole, you know, wagon loads of dead bodies stacked up like cordwood. Families following along behind it crying. That's what we need. You say, oh, you don't know what you're asking for, Brian. Oh, I know exactly what I'm asking for. And I'm looking forward to it. And if you're not looking forward to God's judgment hitting this and this wickedness and everything else, then you need to check yourself. Because I highly doubt you're saved. If you're saying, God, please bless this, keep this system, system going, <laughs> you have some serious issues. Okay, next we're going to go to Psalm 7. Psalm 7. There's going to be a lot of people that I realize will stand before God someday and, and God will be judging them and they'll say, well, I didn't know. And a lot of those people, they watch a few minutes of this video and then they post a comment and go watch some wicked thing. 
God's not going to keep uh, preachers like me around forever, you know. Time will come when he says, okay, go do something else or whatever else. I'm going to judge these people. Or, you know, I might still be here and you'll be gone. That's another way to look at it. Psalm 7, verse 6 through 17. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. Get a hold of that one. Awake for me, for me, to the judgment that thou hast commanded. Lord, you're doing this judgment for me, for my sake. Please, God, arise, Lord. Judge these wicked people, mine enemies, for my sake. I want blessing in your judgment. I know that God's judgment when it hits this nation is something I don't have to worry about. Verse 7, So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. Are you, oh, I want the judgment of God. Okay, can he judge you first? Can he tell you what's wrong first? Verse 9, O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. What a wonderful prayer. But establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit, and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. That's an interesting thing. When God's judgment... My dog's over here barking at a stick. It's a very terrible fight. <laughs> um, when God's judgment comes, it should be something that we praise. It should be something that we should say, Praise the Lord all. Thank you, Lord. Look at this judgment that's happened. But yet, how many people do it? How many people, when you see bad things happening to America, how many people pray and say, Oh, God, stop it. Please help this not to happen. Oh, a, a famine. Oh, God, please spare us from the famine. Why? Please, Lord, don't let any war happen here. Please don't let bad times come. Why not? Let's praise him for it. And I'll tell you right now, I've had sort of the wrong attitude about some of God's judgment over the last two years. There's been a lot of judgment of God that hit during the uh, health you know, issue, we'll say. Um, there's been a lot of judgment. I should be thanking the Lord for that. Okay, next let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Just walk over that way. Hopefully our dog's not going to take out my tripod here with his stick. Matthew 7 verse 12. Yeah, verse 12 through 14. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do so, or do you even, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Okay? The supposed golden rule there. You know, what you want men to do to you, you know, or then you do that to other men, basically, is what Jesus is saying there. Kill that mosquito quick. <laughs> verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 
because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Um, very few people are going to make it through what's going on or for, through what's coming. Um, what we're going to see is we're going to see a large number of people. The yeah. wide road, the broad road, it leads to what? Destruction. Yeah. That's what it leads to. Yeah. Hey, quiet. It's really something. Let me read a couple things here about some judgment. Uh, can't show this on camera right now because I don't want to take it off the tripod, but our dog's just running around in circles here. So if the tripod gets hit, please forgive me here. Very excitable little dog. All right. Examples of blessing in judgment. Okay, let me give you a couple here. COVID-19. Was that a judgment? Yes, that was a judgment. How so? Well, well, it was a judgment. We know it was a judgment. But uh, was there blessing in that judgment? Yes, there was. What, what did it do? Well, it woke up a lot of people. A lot of people started to see government corruption and the lies of the media and whatever else. A lot of people saw that for the very first time. And uh, it shut down a lot of wicked places, too. I thank the Lord for the COVID-19 pandemic. It was a judgment. And we had a blessing in that judgment. We saw a uh, bar in our area that shut down. Somebody else bought it, and they got it revived again, and put all kinds of money into it, and it shut down again. The COVID-19 thing ended a lot of people desiring to go out and be around other people and have to wear the face masks and all the other stuff. Praise the Lord. Hey, YouTube, I'm not speaking against COVID-19, the pandemic. I'm speaking in favor of it. Why? Because it was God's judgment. And there's a blessing in that judgment. So, praise the Lord. And you know what? There was an even more wicked place that shut down because of COVID-19. So, more wicked than a bar. Oh, maybe like a adult club or something like that. Well, they, no, they shut down too. But even more wicked than that. The most wicked buildings out there. The most wicked businesses out there. Say it that way. Were shut down because of COVID-19. You know what it was? Church buildings. Church buildings shut down. Wasn't that nice? Isn't that a nice blessing? And all of a sudden, people started to realize, hey, you know what? Here's an idea. Maybe I could worship the Lord at home or come out to a place like this and worship Jesus Christ. Hey, what a new thought. I don't have to be in some multi-million dollar building trying to pay it off and whatever else with my 10% tithe. Hey, I guess I don't, I don't have to be controlled by this big mouth pastor up here, this hireling, um, that says nobody will ever shut me down. Nobody tells me what to do. Maybe he's not so strong anymore after all. Maybe he doesn't really believe the Bible like I thought he once did. Hmm. Now let's get some uh, other ones in here. Examples of judgment where, of blessing and judgment. There's judgment and God blesses through it. Baby formula shortage is a judgment. Is that a judgment? Yeah, it's a judgment. Is there a blessing in it? Yes, there is. Because now a lot of women are going to have to reconsider some things and say, maybe there's a way I could, you know, nurse my child. Maybe, maybe I should be trying to do that. Well, I can't. Well, then there's probably some alternatives, some healthy alternatives to giving them Similac. I mean, mo probably the most popular baby formula out there. Look at the ingredients of it. It's toxic. It's mostly sugar. You're not helping your child. You're deforming your child. You're destroying their brain. And all the, the first two years of a child's life are the most important time in the entire life of a child, of, of a person. Man or woman, the most important time is that first two years. That's why the mother is supposed to nurse the child. They get the colostrum and all the mother's immunity that gives, goes into the child. It's so important. It's so vital to breastfeed at that time. That's how God designed it to be. And now a lot of women are going to be forced into thinking that way and forced into thinking, maybe I should make something a little bit more healthy for my baby. And quite frankly, the ones that don't, the ones that just say, well, I can't do this and whatever else, I shouldn't be a mother. You're correct. You shouldn't be a mother. And if you're going to go out and give a, a child a bunch of 
toxic stuff or whatever else and put some caro, you know, light corn syrup in it or something, then you really don't deserve to have a child. And I pray for God's judgment to hit those women out there that are like that. Number three, another form of God's judgment that there's actually blessing. And this one's yet to come. Famine. How about that one? Is that going to be a judgment of God upon this nation and upon a lot of other nations out there? Yes, it will be. A created famine where people are starving. The same people that right now sit down at their meal and they don't even thank God for it. Maybe they don't deserve food. Do you ever think about that? <clears throat> Maybe if they go for a week or two, no food. Maybe they'll start to think about it. Maybe they might actually be tempted to, I don't know, pray? <clears throat> hey, uh, you know, we can't keep eating junk food anymore. Uh, you know, all the places, all the grocery stores and everything else, they don't have food. Maybe we should come out here and try to find some food. Maybe? Just maybe? Huh. How about a grid-down situation? Would that be a judgment of God? Wouldn't have been in the past. <laughs> but uh, now, yeah, it'd be a, a judgment of God. A lot of people would think that way. Hmm. What would that do? What would be the blessing in that judgment? It would force people to start becoming less electricity dependent. You might say, well, instead of watching uh, television, maybe I'll come out here and be part of this. There'd be a blessing in that judgment, wouldn't there? How about rising violence and crime? <laughs> Is that a judgment of God? Yeah, it's a judgment of God. God starts to remove his hand of protection from a nation. Is that something that there could be a blessing there? Yeah. What would that be? More vigilance? You're not as careless. You pray more. People start to have to call upon the name of the Lord. How about war and death? Is that a judgment of God? You know, Bob Jones Sr., which I have many issues with that man, but Bob Jones Sr. used to say, war is God's judgment on sin here, and hell is God's judgment on sin in the hereafter, in eternity. And there's a lot of truth to that. War is going to be God's judgment on sin. Will there be blessing in a time of war? Yes. Great chances to witness to people. People start to think about life after death. And quite frankly, if uh, the critical infrastructure breaks down for a little while here in America, that could lead to some really great opportunities. You might have to start relying on the Lord. And quite frankly, too, let me just say this, just to be very honest with you. There's a lot of people that deserve death. There's a lot of people that have gone too far. Talk's not going to work anymore with most people in this country. Uh, we're beyond talking. It's now time that they get eliminated because they're wicked. Home heating oil. How about that one? Home heating oil scarcity. It's happening, especially here in the Northeast. Uh, would that be a judgment of God? Yes, it would. Kind of like a different type of famine. And uh, what would that do? Well, people in the north would be forced to heat with firewood, which would get them in better shape. Oh, it's such a horrible thing to pray for. And I pray for it every day, by the way. I do. Um, I'd like to see the city people that are in this area that have no right to be here. I'd like to see them leave, quite frankly. And I'd like to see the people that are real. I'd like to see them be able to afford better houses or more land or whatever they want. I'd like to see people leave because there's no home heating oil. And um, I'd like to see people that are in bad shape get in better shape because they have to make firewood to be able to live up here. I think that that would be great. I really do. Race war. You say, is a race war a judgment of God? Yeah, it would be. Well, how could there be a blessing if there's race war? People killing each other over the color of their skin. Uh, well, because it would lead back to... It would, uh, Bring back biblical segregation. You see, biblical segregation is, I respect black people. I love black people and their culture. I'm not going to mess them up with my white culture. You see? There's no superiority or you know supremacy and whatever else stuff. That's of the devil. 
white supremacy and black supremacy and whatever else. That's just satanic hate stuff. I don't hate black people because I want to be segregated from them. I'm segregated from the black people because I want them to retain their beautiful culture and their beautiful customs and their beautiful foods and everything else. See some beautiful black woman, I don't want to marry her. Why? Because I mess her up then. She messes up my culture, I mess up her culture. I mean, read Genesis chapter 9 through 11. And you'll see that whole thing. What was the Tower of Babel all about? The people is one. They're all coming together. And God says, no, I want to split that up. You know, out here right now, there's a, there's a lot of nice trees. There's some, there's some hemlock, and there's some, right there's a hemlock, and a lot of these are actually hemlock, and, you know, some fir here, and there's a cedar right there, and, you know, God doesn't want all one tree, one type of tree out here. Just We'll just crossbreed all these trees so they just come out as one type of tree. And we'll just, you know, just mix all the trees. No. Segregation. And there are certain trees that don't grow here. They grow in other areas. And they thrive in other areas. And they're beautiful. You see? A race war would start to bring back biblical segregation. Not saying, you know, and people do wicked levels of segregation where, oh, you have to stay over there because you're disgusting and low and you're an animal and whatever. That's not it. That's not what biblical segregation is. God sets up boundaries to keep people separate so that they can have their beautiful culture that God created. Finally, let's go to Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. Let me grab my Bible here. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift, swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Perfect description of what modern man has become. You know, back when Theodore Roosevelt used to come to this spot here to read this beloved King James Bible. Um, you could say this Romans chapter 3 verses 10 through 18 applied to some of the people out there definitely, but uh, moral character was a lot higher back in those years. People were far better, and that's why God blessed this nation. But uh, that blessing's gone now, and we're about ready to fall into total devastation. And I'll just give you a little theory here about what I believe could happen with war. You see, Russia is in the end times. America is not. I believe what God could do to this nation as a way to lift Russia up to the place it needs to be in in the end times, I believe that God could allow Russia to be his instrument of choice, the weapons of, of the, uh, or instruments of death that we read about in Psalm chapter 7, or Psalm 7. Verse 11, I think it was, <clears throat> or maybe 12 or 13. Psalm 7. God could use Russia as his instrument of death for this nation. And the, I saw a thing years ago. They had you know nuclear submarines that the Russians have, and they were saying that they could basically level this country in a few hours, take out all the major cities. What if that happens? Can you imagine something so horrible? Oh, Oh, that'd be terrible. Well, it wouldn't be bad for here. It wouldn't be bad for a lot of other areas in America. In fact, it could actually be very peaceful and a real blessing. Hmm. Are you open for that blessing? Are you uh, <clears throat> willing to pray to those ends? No, brother, I'd rather pray for the blessing of God, <clears throat> then you're resting his judgment. God wants to judge this nation. Don't stand in his way. Don't keep praying for God to bless this country and keep the wickedness going. Uh, we need to see the end of it. Okay? I don't want uh, 
another election in 2024. I'd like to see America gone before then. Quite frankly. I'd like to see a lot of people dead in this nation. Because that's the only chance people have to come to that true biblical repentance that leads to salvation. So, that is going to be it for this study. Um, please stop praying for God to bless this country. Please stop saying, God bless. I, God bless America. God bless. Um, don't say that anymore. Um, God can bless His people, His children. But uh, anybody else? No. They are not worthy of God's blessing. So, that is going to be it for this study. Um, a lot more I could say, <laughs> but uh, it's just something that's really been hitting me recently because I think I fought against the everything that went on with the pandemic and I fought against it and this is wrong and everything else, but I've been struggling with this thing of getting to the point of saying, okay, no, this is God's judgment. I need to reverse my thinking and say, this is actually a good thing what God is doing through this. And uh, the famine that's coming, probably going to be one of the next things that hits with financial problems and everything else. Um, God will get us through it, brethren. And God could have something at the other end of His judgment waiting for us. If you stand by His Word, if you don't compromise, God could say, you know what? I'm going to bring you through that. And the uh, wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. I'm going to give you a lot of things. We're going to be a lot of riches and wealth when the wicked are driven out of the land. Be able to come to a place like this and have peace and not have to worry about lost people coming here. No way to tell. But uh, I really pray that you take these things to heart. Think about them. Pray about them. Let's pray for, for God's judgment to come. Please do that. So that will be it. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.